Hi, I'm David Fleming from the Disciples Igniting YouTube channel where we are focused on Jesus, advancing his kingdom, and preparing his disciples. Today we're going to continue on our study on the book of Habakkuk, and today we're going to give you a broad history lesson on what's taking place uh, two generations before Habakkuk receives this prophecy that is written down in the book of Habakkuk, and then what's taking place during his lifetime. It really involves three world powers, um, the Assyrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, and then Egypt. Now, if you remember, way back before Habakkuk was written, uh, back in Moses' day, hundreds of years before Habakkuk was written, Egypt was the dominant world force, but they have slowly lost their world dominance, but that doesn't mean that they are not a, a, a power to be reckoned with. But about two generations before Habakkuk, back in 660 BC, the Assyrians had reached their peak of power and world dominance. They were the most prosperous empire upon the face of the earth at 660 BC. And Nineveh was their capital. Nineveh was considered to be the mo the grandest, greatest, most powerful city upon the face of the earth, and it was thought to be unconquerable. I mean, we've talked a little bit about Nineveh, but let me tell you, this was a, a powerfully protected city. Everybody thought it was unconquerable, but yet it was conquered. Now remember, the Assyrian Empire reached their epoch of power in 60, 60 BC, but in 612 BC, that's only about 40 years, the Babylonians had been rising up in power. They had been conquering other nations, and now they have come against Nineveh. They have broken through. They have conquered it. And now the Babylonian Empire is considered to be the most dominant force upon the face of the earth. They have conquered Nineveh. Well, that's not the only uh, thing that's happening in the world at that time. The Egyptians, they're looking back at how they used to be the dominant world force, and they want that uh, position once again. So they decide that they're going to attack the Assyrians. Now, why would Egypt want to attack the Assyrians? Well, the Babylonians are already battling against the Assyrians. They are conquering them, and they have become the world force at that time. But the Assyrians are still very powerful. Uh, they haven't totally been taken over by the Babylonians, at least not yet. And so the Egyptians come in and they attack the Assyrians, thinking, well, if we can just overcome the Assyrians, then we're going to turn our attention. Will the Assyrians, uh, their force is now under our control and we'll attack the Babylonians and we will become, once again, the power force upon the earth. But that's not all. The Josiah, the king of Judah at this time, he somehow decides that he is going to attack Egypt. Now, why would he do this? Who knows? But he wants to, he's also uh, vying for position, for, for dominance. He wants to become a, a, a mover and a shaker in the world of this day. And so he does attack the Egyptians, but King Ushaya, uh, he is killed in battle. And that begins the decline of the kingdom of Judah at that time. Now, if you'll remember back in 622 BC, when uh, the Babylonians, the, the Assyrians are both vying for world dominance, a national revival broke out during King Josiah's reign. It brought about sweeping religious and a, a spiritual move of God throughout his kingdom. But after his death, when he attacked the Egyptians, after his death, the kingdom of Judah began to crumble. They had already uh, lost much of their spiritual fervor that had taken place during revival. And we see that uh, God is bringing them to account for their rebellion. And God is going to use now the kingdom of Babylon to teach them a lesson. Let's learn more about it tomorrow. 